Welcome to Al Jazeera. It's November the 15th, day one of a new era in television news. On November the 15th, 2006, Al Jazeera made history when it launched the first English-language news channel headquartered in the Middle East. Since its inception almost seven years ago, Al Jazeera has gained a reputation of being a world-class broadcaster and has become a major source of news for viewers around the world. Despite its reputation and dedication to journalism, there has been one market that Al Jazeera has been unable to crack, the United States. Here in North America, that is Canada and the United States, the television distribution market is dominated by a few pay TV providers. Unlike in most of the rest of the world, free-to-air television is a relative rarity here, and if you want access to 24-hour news channels, you have to pay up, and in a big way. This also means that channels unable to negotiate carriage with any of the large pay TV providers likely won't be seen by a lot of viewers. This has been the case for Al Jazeera International in the United States. A negative image of the channel, put into the heads of many Americans by a Bush-era propaganda campaign, means the channel has been refused carriage by all the main TV distributors. And recall that no carriage means few viewers, despite the fact that the channel was free-to-air for anyone with the correct hardware. Fast forward to 2013, when Al Jazeera was finally given the opportunity to do something about it. In 2012, it was announced that Al Gore's cable TV channel, Current TV, was up for sale. Al Jazeera jumped at the opportunity, purchasing the network for some $500 million in January 2013. Al Jazeera then set on a course to convert the channel to a new English language affiliate, Al Jazeera America. It's August 20th, 2013. The channel launched in a manner very different from the international launch some seven years ago. While Al Jazeera International went to air covering live breaking news out of Japan and then an in-depth report about the network's history, Al Jazeera America went to air with an hour-long series of short promotional videos and commercial advertising. By the time live news finally started around 1600 Eastern Time, it was clear to me that this station would be nothing like Al Jazeera International. Al Jazeera America led its first newscast with the crisis in Egypt, reports of a school shooting in the United States, and a report from the West Coast on the wildfire situation in the western United States. In contrast, Al Jazeera International led its newscast with the crisis in Egypt, murder charges laid against former Pakistani President Purvez Musharraf, a radiation leak in Japan, and flooding in China. While the news was based around the United States, the coverage was actually pretty decent, and the number of commercial ads minimal. Al Jazeera America's on-screen graphics, while different from the international version, are minimal and don't have too many distracting animations and visual effects like some of its competitors. Al Jazeera America did sport a news ticker during the start of the newscast, but it vanished about a third of the way through the broadcast. The title banners are clean and sport a similar design to that seen on ABC News 24 in Australia. Everyone stand by. Five, four, three, two, one. We're up. It is 4 p.m. in the Eastern Time Zone, and this is the first ever news hour from Al Jazeera America. Welcome, everyone. I'm Tony Harris. Al Jazeera America will compete directly against the big three incumbents, CNN US, MSNBC, and Fox News Channel. The network promises to be a breath of fresh air, promising more in-depth reporting and live programming overnight, while the competition networks are airing pre-recorded content. It remains to be seen, however, whether the channel will fall into the same trap of celebrity soap operas and political banter as most other U.S.-based news channels have done. Of course, the launch of Al Jazeera America has not been without controversy. The main criticism being that American viewers will lose access to Al Jazeera's online stream as a result of the new channel, and viewers all across North America and into South America will lose access to a free-to-air feed of Al Jazeera International on satellite TV. 
While Al Jazeera International was suffering from a lack of carriage on U.S.-based TV distributors, it crafted an, at the time, unique method of distribution, live streaming on the Internet. The network was one of the first news outlets to offer a free live stream to viewers on the Internet and created a massive online following both inside the United States and internationally. On August 18th, however, the Internet stream was cut off to American viewers to appease U.S. TV distributors and to force viewers to watch Al Jazeera America. The channel has also been pulled from DTH satellite service Globecast World TV and is no longer available on free-to-air satellites above North America and South America. Not surprisingly, this has led to a backlash against the channel with pages of satellite forums dedicated to the topic. Use the link on screen to send feedback to Al Jazeera if you disagree with the decision. The launch of Al Jazeera America could mean the start of a fresh new era in U.S. television news, or it might just mean more of the same. With the cutoff of Al Jazeera International in the United States, and on satellite across North America, and the widespread promotion of the new channel on blogs and internet forums, Al Jazeera America should have a large audience at launch. Americans, though, seem to have a craving for more international and not more domestic news. Al Jazeera International, until so recently, filled that void. And whether Al Jazeera America can fill the void of international news in the United States remains to be seen. For INET, this is Christopher, reporting.